This is quite an interesting paper. It's a paper on what happens when you suppress the estradiol during ovarian stimulations and you keep an unsupported luteal phase. So what is this paper about? And the reason why it's interesting is what happens when you give a letrozole? You restrict the estradiol levels. And the question is, does that have an impact on the luteal phase? So this study, letrozole 5 milligram throughout stimulation and recombinant FSH as a biosimilar such as Benfola and another group with no letrozole. Final maturation was with the GNH analog triptolin at 0.2 ml. Now, what did they notice in this study was that, that the GNH agonist shortens the luteal phase. With letrozole, it goes on for almost nine days. Plasma LH levels were significantly higher in the letrozole group, mainly because you have an LH trigger being released from the pituitary. Progesterone stimulation plus five days, progesterone was 30 times higher than in the luteal phase of the control. Less than 35 nanomole indicates a shorter luteal phase, while greater than 16 nanomole indicates a very good luteal phase. They also looked at endometrial maturation in terms of using the EDA test. In the letrozole group, 25% were receptive or late receptive, 75% were post receptive. In the control group, 10% were late receptive, 40% were post receptive, and 50% were no information. Now, I don't see the implication of, of doing an ERA test, but what it has told us very clearly is that the trend of endometrial advancement, which has occurred in this case, in both the arms has occurred. Now, there is no doubt that the effect of receptivity in ovarian stimulation is not due to high estrogen, but due to progesterone, which is increasing. And that is one of the reasons why it happens. Now, what has this study told us? The study has told us at one, that if you give an analog trigger with letrozole, you're certainly going to increase progesterone levels. The progesterone increase is more than 30 times more. And so think whether you need to lose letrozole in a fresh cycle. And if you can trigger, you are more likely to get a better luteal phase support. Can you take this in ovulation induction? Probably yes. Remember again, you're going to have higher LH levels. So continued LH activity and looking at continued better implantation. But remember the other most important thing, even if you give the analog trigger without HCG, doing a fresh transfer does not work. And so if you're going to make use of this in your IVF program, if you stimulate the ovaries with letrozole and FSH and give an analog trigger, give HCG. But take care, you can still get ovarian hyperstimulation when you give letrozole. And that has to be carefully monitored depending on follicles, not on E2 levels.